Hello dear chess lovers and chess experts, Grandmaster Sigi Shipov is inviting you to take a look at the next 10th round game of the first super tournament of the year. The finish line is close, but there's still no clear leader. Every day the scoreboard of the tournament changes, there are many players fighting for the first place. Today, for the first time, I will be commenting on a game by Lanier Dominguez, a mysterious Cuban talent world blitz champion. Before the beginning of the Vincanzi 2009 tournament, we heard the voices of some critics who thought that he has no place in this elite meeting. But now that a group of critics has disappeared, the success of the Cuban Grandmaster is supported with a dumbfounded silence. Now he is among the leaders. I want to offer you to wait until the end of the tournament and only then give an evaluation to Dominguez's performance. There will be no fall through, that's for sure. But how big will the su success be? That we will see. Today, Linear has a difficult day. His opponent is the favorite of the tournament who is stuck in a swamp of draws and probably wants to get out of it. I think that Carlson will battle with everything he has got. My prognosis is Carlson Dominguez 1 0. The Grunfeld Defense, the fruit of chess hypermodernization of the 20s of the last century. Black gives up the center, getting in return quick development and possibilities for counterattack. In Russian literature, the idea of capturing on c4 with the queen is tied to the name Mikhail Botvinnik. White completely took over the center. I want to turn your attention to the fact that his knight is stuck on g1. The subtlety is in the idea not to give the black bishop a reason to go on g4. Creativity of another classic, Vasily Smyslov. The move of the knight to the queen side opens up a corridor for the bishop g7 to shoot the pawn d4. There was already the threat knight b6 and capture on d4. The knight g1 is still in the stable. A typical blow. Black couldn't push through the dark squares in the center, so he turns his attention to the light ones. The automatic answer e5 will give him full rights for the beautiful square d5. A necessary move. White is supporting the pawn d4 once more and is preparing the square c1 for the, the retreat of the bishop, so that on its starting position it won't be in the way of development of the queen side rook. And still, black is taking over space and wins the tempo, but taking the pressure off the square e4. The idea of the Virginian Grandmaster Shahriyar Mamidyar. Black is blocking the center. The pawn c7 is still ready for battle. The pawns taken by Carlson worries me. Did he really not see this last important game in the list in 2008? No, it can't be, since Dominguez principally holds in this position as black. The homework must have led to this position. Well, every game master knows how to spend his own time. Objectively, the strongest move. The planned breakthrough. Black is actively fighting for the center, not giving anything to white. The subtleties are left behind. There are no more reasons not to develop. The spot for the queen side knight is again open. White's center is becoming scarce. The only answer that has any chance for an advantage. A novelty. It's proven. Saw, studied, prepared a stronger move. It's in front of you. White isn't training the queens, keeping the pressure in the center. And Magnus didn't spend much, too much time. He has an hour and 30 minutes left. Dominguez, has, Dominguez just has one minute less. The most solid move. There's no reason for the king to stay on the deathly diagonal. White's idea. He leaves the pawn on e4, so not to worry about the break through e4, and not give a single chance to the bishop g7. The square d5 will be the peak from which a white piece will control the whole board. In his turn, black will try to use the pig d4, but maximum what he can achieve, the move of the pawn e5 to d4. It's unlikely that th that change will lead to equality. The first to get to the peak was the bishop. It is putting unpleasant pressure on black's queen side. A smart decline, fruit of long thought. The change in the time spent has changed. Deming Carlson has an hour and 20 minutes. Dominguez has only 54 minutes left. There are no doubts about who has the initiative, who prepared better for the game. A good prophylactic move. The knight of three is much more important in the battle for the center. Carlson isn't letting the jump bishop g4 and decreases the chances of the force g5, g4. White's letter moves can be seen without a microscope. Bishop d2, bishop c3, castle, queen b5, etc. 
Black isn't allowed to play passively, as far as I can see. Sooner or later, White will strangle him. It's necessary to come up with counterplay. And Lanier came up with it. Played very quickly, possibly even too quickly. There's a suspicion that Magnus missed a very important moment in the game when he needed to deeply study the situation. A wonderful blow. Dominguez suddenly felt the moment when the opponent got an advantage in the center but didn't yet finish the development. That simple contradiction give, gives Black a reason for sharp play. Carlson is coldly checking the opponent's idea. He doesn't believe him. An exact calculation. Looks like the Black Knight is trapped, but Black has an antidote. Exactly like that. The White Queen has to defend the bishop. No time to capture. An elimination of a dangerous pin. Lanier is forcing trades. The time is pressing. Carlson has an hour and eight minutes. Dominguez has 24 minutes left. Nothing else is given. The smallest reduction in speed in the difficult and calculated battle was poisoned with big problems. The, sm um, the queen's side of the board is empty. The intrigue of the game is now all in the question about the pawn e5. Can white seriously pressure it? Too clear of a desire to draw. Looks like the deficit in time, and more importantly, the big difference in it, as opposed to the opponent, ma makes the biggest worry. A risky answer. Crossing is feeling his opponent's feelings and is trying to complicate the game as much as possible. Correct. There is no battle with fast pieces. The continuation of pressure. A strong answer. Looks like the weak jumps of the white queen let black solve the problems of the defense. Now the Norwegian Grandmaster is really taking his time. Today he isn't spending his time correctly. That's a sign of the player being unprepared. He's got 50 minutes left, and Mingus has 7 minutes left. The pins can be different. This one is not dangerous. A sad loss for Carlson. Of course, White will win the pawn back. But on that, the list of achievements will end. The targets of the room B1 quickly leave the dangerous zone. And that St. Knot is taken and stolen on the list. Dominguez already, after getting full equality, unsuccessfully places a bishop, that way reviving the intrigue. This time, the Norwegian Grandmaster isn't hurrying. He's letting the rook into an active position, reserving the square B2 for the queen. A wonderful regrouping. There are way too many candidate moves here. Analysis showed that the more solid move here was queen c6, but queen a4. The most dangerous of batteries is re ready, which can shoot through to the black king. That's already a huge mistake, but the human grandmaster can't be blamed for it. Trust me, the position is too difficult. The deciding blow. The rooks is successfully using the square b7 not without the control of the black bishop. White's pressure is growing into a mating attack. The sacrifice of, on f1 doesn't interest anyone. The last attempt to calm down the weather. Nothing was working. The white attackers unmercifully are clo closing in on the target. The square e7 is covered, the pawn e5 is supported, but that doesn't weaken white's attack. Carlson has 18 minutes left to Dominguez is 3. Remembering the, of the prior failures, Magnus is very scared of messing up in calculations. Forcing the win here was bishop takes e5 and this variation with the unavo unavoidable mate, but rip e1. Here it's time to tighten up and calculate a simple variation. That's okay too. The white queen is entering the rooms of the black king. It won't rest. The main is unavoidable. Black resigns. Yes, he did it. From the tenth attempt, Carlson won. He used the wonderful novelty which puts under dad Black's fashionable model, then met with a great counterplay from Dominguez, completely lost the advantage, and in the end beautifully used the St. Not mistakes of the opponent. A showcase of a duel. Thank you for your attention, dear friends. For you again, we're Grand Master Sega Shipoff. Tomorrow, Vacancy has a day off. We'll see you again on January 30th during the 11th round. Best of everything to you, and have a good day.